now we are joined by Lisa Webb, who's a consumer expert with Witch, and we are going to be asking if smart meters can save you money. So we want your calls on this. Do you have a smart meter? How are you getting on with it? Do you want one? Are you concerned by anything around smart meters? We're going to be doing a little bit of myth busting as well about some of the common misconceptions on smart meters. But do get in touch if you have a question. 207 862 is the number that you need. Uh, Lisa, I'm going to come to you in a moment. Now, I know because I know Rick very very well here, uh, that you are a bit of a sort of an energy enthusiast. Let's put you that. I'd call you a geek. Yeah, I was going to say, you're being kind there. Alexis. Think, yeah. yeah, But look, this is great because you're very... 50% so you, of the apps on my phone are about energy. <laughs> there you go. God, I don't yeah. think have one. He yeah. is not lying, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that. Uh, OK, so you've got a smart meter. Yes, that's it. On, well, this is the, the device connected to it on the table. We'll, we'll come back to this because this is one of the common uh, misconceptions we need to deal with. This is your in-home display. Um, we'll talk a little bit later on about why this isn't actually your smart meter. Because mm. a lot of people sort of say, oh, I've got a problem with my smart meter. And quite often they say they've got a problem with their in-home display. Uh, this shows you what you're using and how you're using it. Mm. But we'll come back to that in a second. Rick, do you feel like you've benefited from having a smart meter? Yeah, I, I actually make money from having my smart meter. Uh, you basically. make money? Yeah, because um, the smart meter works pretty simply in the fact that it works out how much um, I'm... I'm energy I'm using every half hour. I'm on a smart tariff, so I shift my energy use to the time of day when it's cheapest to use that energy. Mm -hmm. So my company says to me, right, between four and seven o'clock tonight, energy is going to be a bit cheaper between four and seven p.m. So what I'm going to do between four and seven p.m. I'm going to whack on all the washing, put on the dryer. If it's a day I can't put stuff on outside, I'm going to charge everything up between those three hours when I know my energy is cheap and my smart meter allows me to do it. OK, uh, so you're, you're, Rick's making money. Uh, look, you've got an interesting setup, uh, which you have at home. This is your setup. Now, I'm not going to ask you, you see my pasta there what's as well. going on there. This is your larder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you've also got uh, solar panels and yeah. you've got a big, big setup. But anyway, but getting a smart meter basically has, has allowed you to be more flexible about the way you use it. Yeah, it's about shifting when I use my energy. So a smart meter allows us all to be a little bit more clever, essentially, about when we use the devices okay. around our, our house. And it allows me to go, right, I know these hours in the day it's cheaper or even these days of the week. For example, there was a Sunday a couple of weeks ago where my energy company emailed me and said, Rick, right, energy's really cheap this day because there's lots of wind around in Scotland. It's a really windy day. It's all being pumped around the country. We've got an excess. Please use a load of energy. It's incredibly cheap. So I was paying nothing like the standard rate. And my smart meter tells my energy company that it's cheap, so I'm going to use it on that day. And maybe the next day, it was really expensive. So I went, oh, you know what? Instead of doing that drying today, let's hold off. Nina, have you got a smart meter? Yes, I have. I've had one for years. Do you it's love a great, it? Big thing. I <laughs> loathe it. I have absolutely no interest in it at all. I've shoved it in the hall cupboard. I, I never look at it from one year's end. I thought, actually, before I came here today, I thought, I must go and have a look at that smart meter. And I thought, oh, I can't be bothered. I really can't. <laughs> so I didn't come. I didn't so, do it. So do you have one of these in-home it, displays? It's, it's, it's a big one. Okay. I've had it so long, it's a big But that's one. your in-home display, yes. so you put that in a cupboard. Yeah. Does that away. make you anxious, Nina? No, it doesn't make me anxious. I just, I'm just, I just have absolutely no interest in it at all. Okay. I mean, the thing is, that sounds like I'm some kind of, you know, energy wastrel. I mean, I, I lead a fairly simple life. There's two of us in the flat. I yeah. don't have children. We haven't got loads of washing. And what we use is what we use. And I know that I'm smart enough to know that if I turn the heating down a couple of notches, I'm going to save energy. And I don't have a, a tumble dryer, so, you know, I, I don't have that, that expense. Yeah. So I know that if I use more electricity, mm. my bill will be You'll higher. Yeah. So I can work that out, thank you very much. I don't <laughs> need, you know, grandmother's okay, But I bet you haven't eggs. had to crawl underneath the cupboard to get a meter reading, because your meter does that for you. <laughs> no, but no, but there the used to be, some years ago, a very nice man who used to come to the door, That's right. rang yeah. the doorbell, and he, he came. He no longer yeah. comes. No, and the electricity meters are in a, in, in downstairs in the hall, and they're quite high, so I'd have to get a little step ladder for him to you go. You've got your the, gas box You key. don't have to do that anymore. I don't, right. no, but I I preferred Mr. Okay. Man to come because I trusted Mr. Man more than I trust this. All right. Well, we're going to come to, come to that. Lisa. Yeah. We've had a little bit of a sort of a testimony there from two uh, smart meter holders. I'll tell you my story a little bit later on. But 
Can we just explain to people what they are? I've been describing them as it's the same as your old meter, it's just got a mobile phone strapped to it that communicates with your energy company. That's about it. That is about it. They're, they're really not that interesting, if I'm no. honest. And I think people want them to be something controversial. And, and really, it's a meter. It, it measures the amount of energy that you use. It knows how much energy is coming into your property and when. But the important bit is that it's telling your energy company what you're using when you're using it automatically so you don't have to do anything and it then means that what you can do is pay for what you use rather than guesstimate or estimate uh, and I think that's really really important for people to be able to budget. Okay let's deal with uh, some other things as well because uh, some of the suspicions I think that people have had around smart meters is the fact that they are being pushed by their energy companies to get one. I was. Uh, yeah, I, I think a I lot of... I was nagged. I was really a nagged. A lot of people. You? But, but what is important to say is that those energy companies are being fined by the government if they don't roll out enough smart meters. So let's answer the question, why does the government want you to have a smart meter? Yeah, so the government has got a sort of quota. They're aiming for 80% of, of households to have one in England, Wales and Scotland by the end of 2025. There are lots of reasons for this. One of them is it actually, it makes energy simpler. It makes it simpler for the consumer, but it also makes it simpler for the company. It means that an, a, a consumer can know what it is they're using when they're using it, but it also allows things like um, automatic top up for prepayment. So for example, do you remember, remember last year when people were getting the assistance with their bills, uh, those who were on automatic prepayment meters, that assistance happened immediately, automatically. If you didn't have an automatic prepayment meter, then you had to go down the shop, you had to get your little mm. voucher, and actually mm. about two million of those were never cashed in. So it's really, really useful for people. It's useful as well for the companies, but also what we're aiming for here is to try and decarbonize the system. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask you the question in a minute of can they save you money? They've saved Rick money, uh, but can they save other people money? Let's uh, get a call. Anne has got in touch from North Lanarkshire. Anne, welcome to the show. What's your question, Anne? My question is, I have a smart meter and my, my company phones me every month and I have got to give them readings for both my meters. And my electric meters are way down the bottom of a cupboard and I'm a pensioner and it's quite hard for me to, to get to it. And I wonder why, if I've got a smart meter, I should have to do that. Ah, very <clears> good <throat> question. Uh, Lisa, what do, we, what do we have to say to Anne? That's interesting, because actually you shouldn't be having to hand mm. over that information. If you've got a smart meter, the <clears> whole <throat> point is that it should automatically be telling your company. Rick, I think, has got some yeah. views on this. Um, uh, Anne, I, I think what's happened is your smart meter's gone dumb. Yeah. Um, essentially. So you probably, I imagine, can I ask, did you have your smart meter put in more than three or four years ago? Yes, I did have a... Yeah, so what happened, that, without getting really techy, there was the first generation of smart meters, and that meant if you ever changed company, you went from, say, British Gas to Octopus or whatever, you mixed it around, then the smart meter wouldn't be able to communicate with the in-house display, and then actually the original ones don't actually talk to, talk to the companies as well. So, sadly, because they were all a bit rubbish when they first came out, you now need to get the new generation of super duper smart meter, which won't do that. And they should give you that for free. So, and, oh. uh, and the best thing you can do is contact your energy supplier and ask them to fit a smart meter for you because they should be able to do that for you. Um, thank you, Anne, for your call. It's uh, worth noting as well, Alexa, sorry, but those, those uh, meters that went dumb, a lot of them have now been put back on. So that's, yeah. that's, my, yeah. that's my story. That's yeah, the, the new that, one, So yeah. I had a smart meter put in about five, six years ago. It was the second generation. Again, not to get too technical, but the energy supply we were with was working just fine. We changed energy supply. They said, your meter doesn't work anymore. So it's gone dumb. And then recently, it's been reactivated. So the new energy supplier that I'm with are getting smart meter meetings. So if your energy, uh, if your smart meter has gone dumb, they are being reactivated because that's a wonderful thing. They can be updated over the air, as they say. They get an update and they start sending that information again to that central hub, which then spreads it around to your energy companies. So let's ask the question, though. Yeah. Can a smart meter 
save you money. It saves Rick's money because he knows what he's doing with them yeah. and he's very techy about it. But an average consumer, let's say an, a pensioner, uh, a, a family household, can they actually save money? In essence, yes, they can. Uh -huh. And, you know, Rick's already given us explanations as to why it can. And Nina, obviously you've said it's not rocket science for you. You know if you turn things down, you're going to be paying less. But the, the ability to actually see what it is you're using can be incredibly incentivizing for you to, to actually use energy at different times. If you do have a smart uh, payment plan, then it does mean that you can use cheaper energy at certain times and that can be really useful for you. But equally, if you know what you've plugged in and that's caused a surge, you can know to use that less. Or for example, if, uh, if you use energy at certain times, if you're able to, obviously there will be some people out there who cannot pick and choose when they use their energy, if they're using essential appliances, mm. for example. But for people who can change their methods and change their energy usage, it can really save you money. Yeah. And also another note to, to, to say that it, don't get obsessed by this thing. <laughs> this is the in-home display. I've spoken to people who, who, when they first get a smart meter, they can't stop looking at it. And then it becomes a sort of a bit of a mild obsession. Stick it in a cupboard, stick it in a drawer. You don't have to look at it. If it's stressing you out, just don't, don't have it. Uh, now, Lisa, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about some of the myths around yeah. smart meters. And there are loads. There's a lot of myths yeah. and there's a lot of suspicion. So let's take them one at a time. So um, smart meters, can they take your personal data? Uh, no. Well, no, they don't. Smart meters do not steal your data. They're not passing it anywhere. They're not handing it over to anyone. And actually, the data that they do take, all it is, is how much energy is coming into your home mm. and when. It's very uncontroversial data. It's also encrypted. It's kept secure. So you do get lots of lots of theories. There's always going to be theories out there. You know, when you introduce new new technology people have always got a little bit of suspicion but what i would say don't worry about it no one's looking into your sitting room and working out what you're doing don't they ever sell your data on so the data that comes from the smart meters is not things like your name your address no no anything i understand like that, that but how much energy you're using do they sell that to companies it's going to depend on what you agree to when you sign ah. up to these things i don't but know what it, i agree but, to but it's de-anonymized uh, and also um I mean, if you're concerned about that, then you should be concerned about any loyalty cards you have in supermarkets. Yeah, it's that. all the same things, but personal data, like, oh, Rick's just switched the telly on. Uh, it's no, gonna no, be no. very, very no. granular information for that to get. Um, let's, take, let's deal with another one. What's the next one here? But data is the most important thing yes. these days. Uh, are smart meters more expensive? Now, Lisa, I've, because I did a documentary on that uh, on Channel 5, which we'll speak about in a second, but a lot of people said, when I got my smart meter, my bills went through the roof. What's happening there? Well, it might be that actually they just use more energy than the estimates suggest. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the good thing about smart meters is that you pay for what you use. Nobody's estimating your bills. If you are a high user, you will pay more than if you are a low user. It, I mean, it's just common sense. Uh, but they are not inherently more expensive to have to own. You don't have to pay for installation for them. Your energy company will do that. Things like repairs, the energy company is responsible for that display that you talked about for the first 12 months. So if anything goes wrong with it, they should be sorting it out for you. So it's not an inherently more expensive item to have. And, and also, I think it's important to say that something, uh, sometimes what has happened, in my experience of people, who have thought that their smart meter has made their bills more expensive. It's not quite that. It's been because you've been on an estimate for a quite a long time, so maybe mm. you've been underpaying your energy company. And then when they put your smart meter, you're actually being charged correctly. And maybe you are using more than what you thought you were using before. And also, there is going to be that payment to bring you up to speed if you've been underpaying, to bring you up to speed with what you actually currently owe. So it's not actually the smart meter that's made your bills more expensive. It's actually the fact that you're being billed accurately for the first time and perhaps you weren't paying what you were really owing uh, at the time. And on the flip side of that, you've also got people who overpay, who yes. end up accruing lots in their account. And, and then and they might have a, you know, a, a good chunk of money sitting there in their energy account, and then all of a sudden you know you don't need to be overpaying that much. Now, the next one is, uh, are, can you get one if you're renting? 
Yes, there's nothing stopping you other than your landlord. So if your landlord says you can, you absolutely can. Sometimes if you rent, so for example, if you're in a high rise building, you might find that the connection issues aren't as good, but actually the tech is improving daily on that. So you're much less likely to find an issue. But absolutely, if you get permission from your landlord, you can absolutely get it. If you move into a flat that already has one or a house that already has one, what I would say, if you've already got the smart meter in there, you're probably not gonna be able to switch back to the old style. Okay, uh, and then the next one is, and, and again, we're dealing with it because it's out there and people are talking about, are smart meters bad for your health? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Rick, Rick. <laughs> Well, that's a reaction there. Yeah. No, no. no. And, and there is no evidence to suggest that, that they're any worse for your health than any other item that you might be using. Yeah. There isn't anything out there. It's Effectively, it's like using mobile phones or yeah. using anything like that. It works off the same networks. It's, it's not going to be doing anything that any other item in your house could be doing. To. Okay. Uh, let's take some more of your calls because you have plenty of questions. Keely in uh, West Sussex. Uh, good afternoon. What's your question? Oh, hiya. It wasn't really my question, but what it what it basically saying is that I know with my network provider, with my tariff, yeah. I know when it's cheaper for me. I don't need a smart meter to tell me yeah. the information by law that I pay for my net my you know my energy to provider to tell me. Um, obviously, I'm on a key meter, and it I get even that they say there's an estimated bill. Yeah. Um, so basically, using your common sense, I don't need to have another device in my house plugged in to be like, oh, it tells me so and so, I'm gonna bash on all my washing then because sure. obviously I know on say we do it late at night. So I okay. obviously so, time So Keely, I, I get your point. You know, you know you know the times, you know what you're paying, you know your tariff. You don't need actually a smart me to tell you that. But I, I think, and, and Lisa will back me up on this uh, probably, easy, that if you do have a smart meter, then cheaper rates are more types of uh, rates that you can go on become available to you if you have that smart meter. Yeah, absolutely. And, and actually, this is a forward thinking process as well, because if you've got the smart meter, going forwards, we're expecting even more tariffs to become available to encourage people to use energy when it's useful. Mm. I was talking to our energy editor at Witch yesterday, and you mentioned this as well, Rick, the idea of wind turbines going nuts in the middle of the night, no mm. one's using the energy then. So if you can use energy when the renewables are actually forcing yeah. the energy around the system, then that's great. Alexis, okay. in, in yeah. 10 years' time, smart tariffs will be the only tariff. Yes. No, no one will have these base tariffs where we currently pay 28 pence per kilowatt hour okay. of electricity. Everyone will be on smart tariffs, time of use tariffs, to push us to use electricity okay. in, uh, in the best time of day. Uh, Keely, I, I totally get your point, but uh, yeah, I hope you got the point from uh, Rick and Lisa as well, that a smart meter will open cheaper, smarter tariffs for you as well, if, should you choose to get one. Again, that's your choice. Uh, Karen in Presswick. Uh, Karen, welcome to the show. What's your question? Um, well, it's not really a question. Um, it was really just to um, make the situation that I've, I'm experiencing um, more sort of readily available to other people. Um, I, I loved my smart meter and my home display, and it was um, sold as something that saves you money because you adjust your behaviour. That's what smart meter and home display is supposed to do. Um, and I was surprised how cheap it was when I used more um, low rate of peak energy. So I thought it was great. Yeah. And then in the summer, I changed my car to, an to a different electric car and a different tariff. And since then, my home display has been giving me a false low rate. So in the summer, of course, it's fine. Uh, in the winter, my bills um, were completely wrong. So I, I thought I was saving lots of money, but I wasn't. Um, and my in-home display had me thinking I had a full sense of security. My bill was going to be quite reasonable when it wasn't. Right. Um is this a, a case of the in-home display not being in sync yeah. really with the smart meter? Yeah, and if there's any issues at all with the in-home display, speak to your energy provider. Like I said, the first 12 months they but you are might not know. To fix it. You yeah. might not know, and that is a problem. But what I would say, as long as the information is still being passed, then that is important. But if you've got any issues at all, do keep an eye on it. Just because you've got a smart meter, don't assume you can just wash your hands of your bills. Do keep mm. an eye on your bills. It's really unfortunate that, that this bill was particularly tricky, but what I would say, don't just forget that you've got bills. Yeah. They are there, keep an eye on them. Uh, uh, speak yeah. to the anyone. How, how accurate, have they always been 100% accurate? 
No, nothing is. There you go. But generally but speaking, it's far more accurate than other options. Neither is a metre reading. I remember once uh, when I had to climb in underneath the step, I gave the wrong metre reading because I didn't quite see the right digit. And, yeah, that, uh, all hell broke loose, I can tell you that. Uh, look, uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, thank you all for your calls on this and your messages. And thank you to Lisa Webb. Uh, great to see you. Thank you, Lisa, uh, from Witch Magazine, who's uh, been joining us. Now, if you want uh, to learn some more about smart meters and you're interested or perhaps curious about installing one, then you can catch up on my Channel 5 documentary uh, that I made into them. Just head to the My5 website and search for smart meters should you get one. Very simple.